Um, we're in section 6-2, we're going to look at example 2. Find these important areas. So we're looking at the normal curve. And we want to find the area between negative 1 and 1. So again, zeros in the middle. And then negative 1 and 1. What's this area? We've seen it before. So we're going to use normal CDF. Negative 1 to 1. And we'll pull out that calculator. Negative 1 to 1. And we get 0.6827. I'm going to always do four decimal places. Does anybody remember what this is? This is one standard deviation and 68%. So I didn't make these numbers up. They're actually coming from this function. So let's go ahead and do negative 2 and 2. We might know the answer. So we'll go a little bit farther, up to 2. I remember it being around 95. Let's check if that works, if that's what we get. So we'll do normal CDF, negative 2 to 2. I remember the empirical rule telling me around 95% for two standard deviations. Yep, 95.45. All right, in the last one, we're going to do three standard deviations. So between negative 3 and 3, so that's where the tails are. So again, right, it's almost 1 because it's almost the whole curve. Hopefully near 99.7. So we'll do normal CDF of negative 3 to 3. And I remember being around 99.7 from empirical rule. Yep, 99.73. And so we've seen these before in the empirical rule. So they're not totally made up numbers. These are just more exact versions of these answers. All right, let's try another one. Um, I think we're going to go backwards in the next example. So sometimes we know area, and we want to find z-score. So working backwards. Um, we'll do the calculator in a second, but it's in the same menu. But we're going to go down to inverse norm. Inverse for kind of a backwards function. So the structure of this function is you do inverse norm. You always do area to the left. It's just the way the formula is written. And it'll output a z-score. So we use this when we have area or percents. So in example three, we have we want to find the z-score. So we want z-score, which means we're going backwards, corresponding to the area to the left of z, unknown, is 0.43. So this is my area, not my z-score. So we'll put 0 in the middle. Um, 0 actually represents 50-50 because it cuts it in half. So I know that the z-score is a little bit over here because it's only 0.43 and not 50%. So the z is unknown. The area is 0.43. So if I know area, I don't label the number line because I don't know the number line. I know the area. So we'll go ahead and use this new function to find a z-score. Anytime we go backwards, we use the inverse. So z is inverse norm of 0.43. It'll be in that exact same menu. Second distribution, and then inverse norm should be the third one down. And you only type one number because it's only area to the left. There's not a lower and an upper anymore. So my z-score is negative. 0.176. And if you wanted to check this, this is actually the same as doing, so second distribution, normal CDF, if we did the reverse. So negative infinity. So negative 10 to the 99 up to this z-score. 
should output the area of 0.43. So they're just convincing you that these are opposites of each other. Yep, 0.43, a little off because of rounding. All right, let's try example four. We want to find the z-score if area to the right is 0.166. So now it's telling us the right side area. And I'm only going to shade a little bit because it's only 0.166. So halfway is about 50, so it's less than halfway. Um, the problem with the function is we need the left area to use the calculator. It's just the way the calculator is programmed. Um, it needs to be a function, so it can only have one input, so that's why it's just programmed for left area. But we can easily find that. So we know this area is 0.166 on the right, so the left area would just be 1 minus that, because the whole curve is 1. And I get 0.834. So the left side is 0.834, right, because the whole curve is 1. So we'll just do inverse norm of 0.834. So it needs to always be the left area. So another reason why it's important to always draw the curve. So we'll do inverse norm, which is the third one down, 0.834, and we get about a z-score of 0 0.970. I like three decimal places for z-score. So as long as you draw the curve and find the left area, you can do this.